Yeah. Now, if your voice cannot be heard on this recording, then you are speaking too softly. Some stranger watched one of my class videos and had the audacity to say that he couldn't understand what I was saying nor what any suit was saying. One of those is more important. Well, I just say, you know, how dare someone watch one of my videos when, okay. when you publicly upload it for the entire world to see? I don't know. It's my. I think it's my fourth most popular video. It has a couple thousand views in it. It's like a 22 second, 22 minute segment for one of my classes. Because YouTube decided to send it out and people looked at it and go, huh, a string of numbers in their title. Let me click on that. Somebody gave me a like. I saw that you have subscribers on YouTube. What's that? I saw you had subscribers on YouTube. Well, I can see my students being subscribers and then they just never get around to unsubscribing. But occasionally I get subscribers from elsewhere. Somebody said you get more viewers if you actually had descriptions in the title. <laughs> And I thought, and so, yes, I'm going to be an influencer for a living. Dingley box. <laughs> uh, what's the first step to do a force diagram? Actually, to solve the problem. Okay. 
and done with that part. All right, so where do you want to start? Does the pulley? I think the pulley is part of the ground. The pulley is part of the ground. Okay. Ideal rope, ideal pulley. Let's do a friction first. All right, so which way is friction acting on what? Would it be on the pulley and the string itself? or They are ideal. There is no friction between pulley so and string. So it would be the A box then because it would be moving. Which way is the friction acting on this A so box? The A box would be going to the left and then on the ground would be going to the right. All right. subscripts in here because there are two objects if it helps uh, because there is only one thing that is experiencing friction here you don't actually have to for the friction we will later on though so it's optional here wait we will later on need to put subscripts even though there's only one pair of we don't need to put the subscripts on friction we will need to put subscripts on some of the other forces okay yeah your mind reading skills are off today <laughs> Oh, okay. That's good to know. Uh, what next? Uh, that's that's it. The only other place that there potentially is friction is between rope and pulley, but I made them ideal. And the friction between rope and pulley won't come in until chapter nine, I think. Uh, so friction done. But would they go to the same direction as where the, the friction for the A box is? So like the pulley and the rope, would it be at the same force, at the same friction direction as the A box, or would it be the opposite direction? The friction on the rope would be, would basically be like that, the friction. Friction on the rope would be sort of like that, and friction on the pulley would be like that. All right. Because it's good, because the rope is causing the pulley to rotate that direction. Okay. But we don't have to worry ourselves about that right now. Uh, what else? Oh, wait. Um, I was going to ask. So, so in the, the mechanics of the problem to begin with, is B like slowly falling down and A is like approaching? Possibly. Okay. I didn't give enough information to say whether A is moving or not. Mm -hmm. Still tension. There's still tension. Okay. Is the tension then between the boxes? Does that make sense? Am I tripping? I, I don't know if you're tripping or not. <laughs> <laughs> would the tension yeah. be in the rope itself? Like one direction would be on like so it's gonna be like a perpendicular one. So there's gonna be Alright. So first off if box A moves, we've established that it would move to the right because we have friction going that way. Yeah. yeah. Is anything pulling on box A directly? Not B. Ooh, not directly. Uh, no. The ground? The rope? The yes. Rope. The rope is pulling on box A, so there's a force that's exerting between A and the rope. So tension is acting here and here. The rope is stretched. There's got to be something pulling on the ends. So that is a pair of tensions. So, so we, but then it would also be the same for B, but that's when we have to label the differences. Okay. I'm, 
No, but if you want to. Okay. <laughs> so there is also here. So I'm going to have a tension at each end of the rope. This is a pair right here when I talk about force pairs. There's a tension acting down here and a tension acting up there. That is a pair also. So when we talk about forces coming in pairs, those are the two pairs. Now, wait, there's one wooden, wooden ends of ropes as well? If the rope is ideal, it is the same tension on both ends. If the rope is not ideal, then you do need the subscripts. These two would have a, a subscript, probably A. These two would have a subscript, probably B. At this point in the course, I'm okay with you not putting the subscripts on there. But if you do put subscripts on there, A, A, and B, B. When we take away the friction, the frictionless aspect of the ideal, uh, the pulley and the rope. And so in other words, the pulley is being turned. At that point, the tension in the rope is no longer the same throughout. And we do need to have the subgroups. It will matter at that point. So, with our ideal rope and pulley, these subscripts are optional. But if you're going to put them in, put them in correctly. Uh, we have only one rope. We've dealt with the, ten the pairs at each end. So we're done with tension. Normal. Way is it acting on box A? Down, no, upper A, downward down. Would there be one on B as well? I mean, it's it's levitating right now, but like when it falls down, do we have for because I'm not sure where it is. Maybe what is B touching? Normal force requires contact. What is it touching? The air. Yeah, we don't. Air is not the, something you want to mess with right now. It's touching nothing as of this moment. Yeah, so. There's nothing in there? If we're talking about it hitting the ground, that's a different problem. But you'll say that in the problem without. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As soon as it hits the ground, yes, there's a normal force there. But now, you've got this pair of normal forces here. There's no normal forces acting on B. That is a, a rookie mistake. It's, some people will put a normal force between the side of the cliff and B, but in my beautiful drawing over here, they are not touching. Okay. And even if they are touching, uh, I don't want to get into those nuances now. Never mind. Uh, there is another pair of normal forces. The one most overlooked. Is it the in the road? Yeah. Yes. We still have a normal force there. So upward on the rope and then downward on the pulley? Um, I know that the rope is in contact from basically from along somewhere along that path right there. I did not give you enough information for you to know exactly that angle. But there is somewhere in that range. So when you draw it, just make sure you're drawing it somewhere in there. I tend to do it at sort of somewhere in the middle. We do need subscripts because we do have two pairs of normal forces. So I'm going to put my little A right there, and over here, uh, R, P, G, whatever. Just something not A, because I've already used that. Uh, that's it for touching. So normal, done. And now, saving the, what I consider the easiest for last. There's one in A and B, and for A, it would be going down, and then the ground, it would be going up. All right, so we've got this weight of A there, and weight of A there. There's also one at B, where it's pointing down at the end, pointing up from the ground. On the ground. Yeah. But I don't know about the string and the ground. If you put uh, weight, it, it's an ideal string, so it is massless, therefore it has no weight. Okay. If you did put a, a weight vector down on this and then one coming up here, I don't take off for it, I just ignore it. Okay. 
But if the but if the string is not ideal, would there be if so if it's not ideal, remember there's three characteristics. There's yeah. frictionless, stretchless, and massless. Mm -hmm. So frictionless we will definitely deal with. Uh, massless, if you did massless, then you need to take into account the fact that as the rope moves, more and more of the mass is hanging down, so we'd have the weight is changing here mm -hmm. because you get more rope going. Okay. And 151, I don't do that. Okay. Unless you want to. No. Seems a bit trickier if you want to think about it. No, I'm good. <laughs> And done. Question is up to here because I'm going to take a detour off the force diagram just for a moment and just go through an analysis just so you get some idea of where this fits into the big scheme of things. You would let us know at the beginning of the fall if it was ideal, right? Yes, uh, and if in doubt, just ask. Because I might be thinking intensely, but that doesn't always make it into the wording. All right. So, as part of the entire process, is what I refer to as the facades method. This is, uh, anyone talks about the facades method, they probably were one of my students. So this is basically the process that we'll go through. And yes, it would be nice if I get away with single S, but that would do a little bit better. Uh, so this is the force diagram. So the first thing you're gonna do when, it, when you're faced with a problem, generally you're gonna find acceleration. So force diagram is the first step. A for acceleration, direction, CA for coordinate axes. D for decomposition. E for equations of motion. S for substitution. And second S for solve. So this is the the steps that we're going to go through. And force diagram, first step, we've done that. That'd be able to like you were squinting. Do you need me to read anything? Uh, e says equation of motion. Yes. Okay. And I'll point out now, and we'll point it out several times probably, but equations of motion are not the equations from chapters two and three. Those, even though those, those are equations that describe motion, in physics, when we say equations of motion, we are not talking about the chapter two and three equations. We're talking about Newton's second law. What's the last S? Solve. Solve, okay. What I mean by acceleration direction is looking at the problem, and in some problems you, you don't know and you just have to take your best guess, and then you'll find out later if you're right or not. But if A is going to accelerate, in which direction will it accelerate? To the right. Okay. So what I would do is I would just draw a little arrow that's not a force, so it doesn't go in the force diagram, but I'm just putting it near it. So acceleration is going that way, and which way will B accelerate? Downward. Coordinate axes, one of the axes will be in the direction of motion uh, or direction of acceleration and the other one will be perpendicular to that. I do not have to have the same coordinate system for both masses. I can have different coordinate systems, but whatever I pick for mass A, I need to stick with it for the rest of the problem. And whatever I pick for B, I gotta stick with it for the rest of the problem. All right, so for A, I have acceleration to the right it also would be the direction of movement, so it's convenient. So I'm going to set up a coordinate system so that I have I subscript A hat, and then J hat up or down, it doesn't matter. Any opinions or care? Downward J hat, downward I hat? What? Just downward. 
Down one. Yeah. Right. Now over here, this is one dimensional motion, so I only need an I hat or a J hat. It doesn't matter which letter you pick for it. I tend to pick I hat for the direction of acceleration, but that's just me. Pick that link. So I'm gonna pick I sub J hat. Uh, no, sorry, sub B. So that's the coordinate axis. Now there are times when it's convenient to have the direction of the coordinate system to be opposite the direction of acceleration, uh, such as in the book cup problem, or if you watch the video. But for right now, we're not worried about that. Decomposition. If you look at the vectors that are applied, the force vectors that are applied to mass B, are there any of these vectors that are not parallel or anti-parallel to our coordinate system? In other words, are they in the I hat or negative I hat direction? So I don't need to break anything up there. Over here, given our four forces that are acting on mass A, are any of them not in the plus or minus I hat direction or plus or minus J hat direction? The, the Y subscript A? Y subscript A is in the negative J hat direction. Frictions in the negative i hat direction. All right, but we don't have to worry about that. Nothing to decompose there. If you had box on ramp, you will need to decompose something because if I pick a coordinate system, so down the ramp and perpendicular to it, well, weight is acting straight down. It is not in the i hat direction. It is plus or minus. It's not in the plus or minus j hat direction. It's in a combination. That's when you have to break it up. Equations of motion. In this particular case, we will have three equations of motion. The template for linear motion is F equals MA. That is the template for what we're about to do. I'm going to set up three equations. On the left-hand side will be forces. On the right-hand side will be mass times acceleration. So let's take this. So I'm going to have an I sub A hat, a J sub A hat, and it, not a J there, and an I sub, I sub 